Self-Study of Clinical Looking Glass, Tutorial 6, Developing Index Event Line Intuition Using the Browse Function. For a deeper and amusing understanding of how to use cohorts to analyze healthcare quality, read Riddles in Accountable Healthcare by Aron Bellin, MD, available through Amazon in paperback or Kindle. In the previous session, we built the diabetes cohort. If you recall, take a look at it again, it consisted of two lines. The original hemoglobin A1c greater than or equal to 9.5 in June of 02 to 03 with age 21 to 65, and a repeat hemoglobin A1c within 180 to 365 days after the diabetes event. Any patient who met these two criteria were eligible for the cohort, and the cohort index state was chosen by the index event line to be the repeat hemoglobin A1c. That is, the date time of the repeat was the date time attributed to the cohort. That is important because we are about to now use the browse function. And the browse function allows you to look at the event and the attributes of that event to which the index event line is pointing. So if you use the browse function and you have a cohort such as this one where the index event line is pointing to line number two, then the browse function will show us information about the events of line number two. If your index event line is pointing to line number one, then the browse function will show us information about the event of line number one. Clearly, the nature of the question you ask will determine where you want the index event line to point. If you are interested in seeing what the ultimate hemoglobin A1c became, then in fact you want the second line. And that is what this cohort does. It looks at the earliest of the repeat hemoglobin A1c. Let's close. Remember, we're not saving, we're just closing. We notice that it's green, so it's ready to be acted upon. I hover over the cohort, I right-click, and then I notice the Browse function. I left-click on Browse. And now the Browse window opens up. <clears throat> the Browse window shows us the elements that I might want to look at. I can look at the event type, I can look at the clinic, but in this case, all I really want is the lab value. I want to know what that repeat hemoglobin A1c looked like. You'll notice that since the index event line is pointing to repeat, there are a total of 1,821 records. For the first line, there are zero records. That's because the browse function does not recognize any of the events that belong to the first condition line. Since the index event line is not pointing to it, the browse function ignores it completely and says, I can't tell you anything about it. That's why it says zero records. In addition, you can choose to add to this a patient name, their race, their socioeconomic status, all sorts of other interesting features, their age at the index date. We're not going to do that right now. And your output type can be of three forms, Excel 2003, Excel 2007, and a CSV file. I prefer Excel 2007. It allows for full documentation of the cohorts and also allows for a nearly infinite number of rows. Excel 2003 tends to cut off at 50,000. So here we have it. We've chosen the elements I want to browse from where the index event line is pointing. I've chosen the output Excel 2007 and I'm ready to run. It asked me whether I want to see identifiers. If I did, it would ask me, is it a QA project? If it were, I'd have to say yes. If it's an IRB project, I'd have to put in the IRB number. If it is a patient work list, like I'm following up a group of patients in my clinic to find out who didn't have a pap test, I need to write that out contemporaneously. And the system will record the date, the time, the user, 
and the very question that I asked, as well as my contemporaneous claim of legitimacy for seeing the identifiers. So the system is fully audited. We're going to remove identifiers because I really don't need them. And now I'll just get the report without identifiers. The system looks at the event chosen by the index event line. It creates an Excel spreadsheet. And when I want that, I left click on the, on the Excel spreadsheet. I left click on open. I allow it to open up. I'll enable editing. And what you'll see is there are two tabs. First is a summary tab, which shows me the criteria used to build the original cohort. This is very nice. So Looking Glass creates not just the data, but actually the documentation. It shows you clearly that it's earliest of repeat hemoglobin A1C, so you know which of the two lines it's pointing to. And here's the data. And here are the repeat test values. And you can see they are many of them that are very bad. They're not in the range that you would like them to have. The original one was 9.5, and then a repeat one six months to a year later shows a lot of people with a bad hemoglobin A1C. Now, this patient ID is not the real patient ID. This is obviously a, a proxy for it. But it allows you to see that if you had identifiers, you'd be able to find the patients who need to follow up. The browse function is a very good example of a very practical way to use Looking Glass to find patients who need additional care, and also as a demonstration of the power of Looking Glass to allow you to choose which of the two lines you even want to look at. Do you want to look at the first one and see what the original hemoglobin A1C was, or in this case, the second one? I can't stress enough how important this index event line is and how important it is for you to take ownership of this event line and always point to the very line you want to study